Hello, this is Shan Chandrasekhar welcoming you to another delightful part of our programming. We're extremely pleased to inform you that we have an outstanding artist of international stature in the studio here with us today. She's extremely popular, she's well known, she's one of the topmost star idols of India. She's acted in nearly 200 feature films in the Indian subcontinent and she's also a very highly acclaimed, professionally trained Bharatanatyam classical dancer and now a choreographer, a composer and also runs an institution. With us in the studio is one of the most beautiful women of India and your favorite, Shobhana. Shobhana, it's absolutely great seeing you again. That was an awesome introduction, thank you. Well, you deserve it. <laughs> Shobhana, the last time, from the time you came here, you've done a great deal of work, and your uh, recent national award, our hearty congratulations you know, on this national award. Tell us about this national award that you received for Mitra. Yeah, Mitra is a film, it's a kind of a um, English, Indian English film that I did last year, a couple of years ago. I won the national award last year for the best actress. It's uh, about a woman who comes to America and who refuses to live by the American culture. So it's about loneliness, not only, uh, a loneliness is kind of an emotion which is common, you know, whether you're, you're out of your country or here. It's probably an emotion that uh, you have if you're in a relationship with a man, excuse mm -hmm. me. So <laughs> I think that is why the film appealed to a lot of families. Uh -huh. And uh, a family film is always a success. He told his parents and his parents told their parents and their parents told my parents and before I even knew it, we were married. Oh. The majority of the technical team was, you know, they, they comprised of women, women, I believe. Yes. And it was directed by Revati, who's also a very popular uh, Actress, artist yes, you know, by herself. Yes, yes. Uh, so tell me about this interaction. This was the one. first film, Indian film, that has been uh, uh, done by an all-woman crew, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we were a very, very small uh, team of people coming in from India, you know, because of the financial aspect, and it was different for me because uh, usually an Indian film has about two hundred people on on the set. It's a different way of working, mm -hmm. but here every person, very few people technicians, they'd taken the film so seriously and they were multitasking. Mm -hmm. So when you are communicating with just a few of them, there is, there's no risk of you know, any kind of mess up. And they'd taken it so personally and I think that has also contributed towards the film's success. You know, we, we had the, the costume designer doing the boom. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever it is. And we had Revati doing not only the directing work, she was also scripting and she was also doing the clap and uh, I was the only one who was just acting so they were kind of spoiled spoiled me they said you just do your work and relax that's interesting so it's a wonderful team of technicians that I had worked with you've acted with some of the topmost heroes and heroines as, uh, in the Indian subcontinent in various languages you know Mamoti in Malayalam uh, Rajinikanth in Tamil Kamala Hassan in Tamil Mr. Bachchan yeah. we did a little video uh, with with him, he was wonderful to work with. Well, tell me this interaction about, uh, you know, you and Amitabh. I understand when you were shooting, there were some very interesting incidents, I believe, on location. Tell us about it. Yes, we were shooting uh, a, a video, a video uh, for his, one of his uh, kabhi songs. Kabhi Kabhi. Kabhi Kabhi that he, he had sung. And, uh, you know, we were shooting in a place called Idhar uh -huh. in Ahmedabad. Uh -huh. And it was dry, barren location. And because of Mr. Bachchan, you had 10,000 people waiting, you know, outside to see him but I was dressed in about I think six or nine yards of just cloth and I needed a lot of space to actually change 
and they didn't have one of those vans that you hear about in Bollywood and you know Hollywood that you have. So I was stuck for a mm. place to change. Mm. And uh, the unit, somehow there was this miscommunication and, and they thought that South Indian actresses would actually change behind trees. <laughs> Basically, they thought that we were, we were so accommodating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and because the South Indian films have a smaller market, mm -hmm. and so the, the artists are kind of trained to adjust to the mm -hmm. surroundings. But the problem was I had, I had a lot of cloth to actually drape on. So, uh, and then there was Mr. Bachchan came up and uh, he actually volunteered and he, he gave us his bus and he ended up leaving and he ended up actually going and sitting with his audience. That's wonderful. So for two hours he was mobbed because he had no place to go. You know, his, his place was in his, in his van, right. which he gave for, for me. And uh, so that, at that time while I was changing, he was actually being uh, mobbed. <laughs> so that was very nice. I mean. What was it working, you know, with one of the dadas of the Indian film industry, such as Amitabh Bachchan, for that matter? Because four days almost you were there shooting with him. So what, what was he like as a person? Um, he has a wonderful sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a gentleman. And I think we really, we really uh, got on well because I kind of pulled his leg. And he, it was a surprise for him, you know. Uh -huh. And I think it was a welcome surprise. Uh, I just kind of... The moment I met him, I said, hello, Mr. Bachchan, how, how is the weather up there? Because he's very, very tall. So, and he has watched a lot of my uh, films. And he, you know, he's, being, being a true artist, you always look around for inspiration. Right. So he has been in inspired by the actors whom I have worked with. I have done many films with Mr. Mamuti right. and Mr. Mohan Lal. And in these people, uh, Mr. Bachchan actually watches all your films. Mm -hmm. So the, he was, you know, excited. And I think the dynamics between him is, was, he was always wanting to know who I had worked with, what kind of script I would like to work with, and, and how these artists perform. So, you know, he had a childlike uh, excitement about him, you know. And uh, I think I was lucky to actually see that, you know, such a, such a great artist. That's great. Kabhi -kabhi mere dil mein khayal aata hai. You've also done some outstanding films with Mamuti. Yes. Let's talk about a couple of your award-winning films that you've done with him. You know. uh, I have worked with uh, Mr. Mamuti. I think he has a record of uh, doing his maximum amount of films with me as a, as a, as a team mm -hmm. and Mr. Mohanlal. So that yeah. is a credit to me. I think I've uh, done about 50 films with yeah. each. Right. And uh, I think I have uh, also evolved as an artist because right. I have worked with such maestros ever since... Ever since I was younger. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's just the fantastic and the way and the ability to also put in so much of life to a very regular character. You right. know, because he, you know, we do so many films that it is not surprising that we kind of sometimes repeat the same lines in different films right. or maybe even have a same situation. So th there are times when, you know, you feel that you've done the same old thing. And, uh, but it's incredible. That is the difference between a good artist, mm -hmm. you know, how he, he strives just to make everything that he says or, or is different from what he has already done, done before. And this is a challenge because in, in Indian films, you, there is a kind of a base line mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is it's kind of common, mm -hmm. you see. So this is what we are actually struggling mm -hmm. against. And uh, Mamuti, both Mamuti and Mohanlal have really contributed to what I am today as an, as an actress. You also had uh, the pleasure of working with, uh, I would say, the king of the Tamil film industry, you know, Rajni Khan. Yes. You know, uh, Rajni is a delightful man. You know, I've had the pleasure of having him in the studio and I've done yes. more than one special with him. Yes. And by the way, Rajni has spoken very fondly of you as well in the really? past, you know, when we talked about Dalabadi. Okay. Uh, and I have a pleasant surprise for you. I've also had Mani Ratnam, oh. who is the director of the film Dalapadi okay. here with us. And he spoke very well of the artists who performed in Dalapadi as well. And you were the heroine of Dalapadi. Tell me about your work in that film with Rajnikanth. Let me tell you about this incident with Mr. Rajnikanth. I mean, he is he's an icon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was slightly nervous because, you know, you've heard so many wonderful stories about him. And the thing is, he puts you at, at ease. You know, when you... We walk into a set, he just springs up. And this is, might seem common for a Western, you know, in a, in a Western point of view, but it is not really from an Indian point of view, you know. And then he offers you his chair and everything. He, he charms you. 
And uh, there was this particular sequence that I had to do in a film where it was a rain dance. It was typical rain uh, songs. And my mother is very nervous when it comes to that. Uh -huh. So uh, you, I, I had my, my cliched white sari, transparent white sari and everything. Mm. So it is actually a battle of the mind and mm. we were trying to outsmart each other. <laughs> like the, the tailor of, of the film, he uh -huh. was trying to see how transparent he could make the cloth. Mm -hmm. And my mother was trying to see as how much of actually, you know, inside material she can uh, put. So we, in one situation, we had to take the tablecloth mm -hmm. off, the, off the makeup room mm -hmm. and actually stitch on an underskirt on the, on the sly. Yeah. So it is actually a plastic blouse mm -hmm. and a skirt that I was, I was wearing and, uh -huh. and nobody knew about that. <laughs> So the only person who actually knew about that was Mr. Rajnikant because he had to actually lift me during a shot. Uh -huh. So when, when they said start camera action, you know, we both came and then he lifted me in one of those traditional hero heroine lifts uh -huh. that, that you see and this entire cloth inside went crackle. Oh. crackle, crackle. <laughs> And then he looked at me and said, you're a smart girl. I said, please, please don't, you know, tell anybody. <laughs> you know? And he said, you just do whatever you want, you know, yeah. you just feel comfortable with it. Which is very, very nice because it is his film also. And uh, it's expected that the hero will also probably want the heroine to reveal because it might work mm -hmm. well for the film, basically. Uh -huh. but, but he was very nice. He said, you know, you do whatever you want. If you mm -hmm. do not want to expose, it's fine with me. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's your equation with the producer. Uh -huh. So I respected him, him for that. And uh, he's a very down-to-earth person. And uh, that also shows an amount of intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that's it. He's a, just a great guy. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Let's now talk about another great actor, you know, another big hero in the Indian film industry, Kamal Hassan. You know, Kamal is really a you know, versatile artist. He's a born artist, very talented. Uh, he's been very successful both in South as well as in North as well. And he's done some outstanding films. Now, you and Kamal have done some movies together. Right. Enakul Vurvan was my first film. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very young. I was about 14. And uh, you see, though I was, I was kind of taller, uh, I really respect Mr. Kamala Hassan because, you know, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very rare for people in the films to think beyond that work situation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have been misunderstood in the past because, you know, when, you know naturally when, when you're a teenager, especially when you're that, that young and you are made to look older, mm -hmm. you are supposed to think older because mm -hmm. you're actually maybe playing an 18 or 19 year old. Mm -hmm. And uh, during work, it's okay because you have a lot of, uh, you know, directors guiding you and then, you know, psyching you into thinking that Right. that way. Mm -hmm. So you basically deliver. Mm -hmm. But off the, off the camera, right. you become a 14 year old. You right. know? Uh -huh. So you're either gawky and, mm -hmm. you, and you really don't know about uh, how to really behave or your body language in a strange situation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, because of that, you are misunderstood. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. And uh, that has happened to me in the past. But with Mr. Kamala Hassan, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the fact that, that he, beyond, he went beyond films, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he has stuck up for me. He's there was one situation where, uh, um, you know, I, I overslept or something. Some, mm -hmm. some, we were working to release the film for Diwali. Mm -hmm. So he, we were, sleep, we were, they were shooting until late into night, and uh, and I kind of, uh, you know, went wherever I, I went into a dark corner of the sets, and I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there was put one particular shot at three o'clock in the morning when they actually realized that I had to be around as a prop somewhere and they, mm -hmm. and they searched all over the studios for me and they couldn't find me. And uh, when they found me, I was, you know, I just got up because I was not used to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I did get yelled at by the, by the entire unit, but he actually stood up for me and he said, you know, you can't blame her because she's just a kid. Mm -hmm. So you blame yourself because you've not stuck to your time and he actually walked off the set. Wow. Uh -huh. So was pretty cool, as you say. <laughs> when a producer approaches you, after you reach a certain threshold, then you can pick and choose. During the period, what do you look for in a film? Well, I think, uh, you know, it is not really that I had success right from the beginning. In fact, my very first film with Mr. Kamala Hassan was a super flop. Mm -hmm. and, and that really pulled me down morally, I mean, morale-wise. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
uh, it also taught me a great lesson, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it balanced me out in some way because mm -hmm. for a, for an adolescent, mm -hmm. this, this is a crushing disappointment, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I've I, in some papers they actually gave me a review saying the film flopped because of a very gawky heroine. Mm -hmm. So so that was there on one hand, and I had simultaneously done a film with uh, in Kerala mm -hmm. with Mr. Balachandran Menon, which was a super hit. Uh -huh. You see, so throughout my my career, I've I've had a balance, mm -hmm. and uh, so I really learned to appreciate success mm -hmm. because I had such a disastrous uh, beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this phase is the, the, the there is a phase that artists go through. Mm -hmm. Initially, you're not aware of who is who of what. What the, what the production value is mm -hmm. of, so you actually learn during mm -hmm. your career, and that's not very good. But mm -hmm. uh, I probably started picking a film because of the production value, because mm -hmm. of a producer, and because of a hero initially. Mm -hmm. That it happens to most heroines in the first four five years of your of your career, you do that, and you live on the success of the hero, and then you you become successful, and then you decide that hey, I'm also there. And then maybe somebody dares to give you a heroine-oriented film, mm -hmm. which does well. And then you sit on a high horse thinking mm -hmm. that, you know, it's because of you that the film film does well. Mm -hmm. And then you decide to only take heroine-oriented films, mm -hmm. which is a disastrous move because mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that in India. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then you realize after two years that it was a bad move because all your films flop. Mm -hmm. now, if, you, if you've actually noticed the careers of most heroines, when they decide to do only heroine oriented films, it, it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, know, you get back saying, okay, let me do a, a good film. Then you get into this good film mode, mm -hmm. and then you start choosing good di directors and scripts, and that is when it actually works for you. So I think I've, uh, I've done my, my average bit of doing everything. I first, did, I first started choosing films because of the hero, mm -hmm. and then because I felt very powerful doing a... <laughs> heroine-oriented film, and then I think now I'm in the mode where I will just choose a film because the, the technical team inspires me. You're very professionally trained in Bharatanatyam, which is one of the most difficult forms of classical art, highly disciplined, and um, at the same time, extremely intricate. And you've mastered that art, you've been doing it, in, you know, for many years now, uh, to the point where you're an extraordinarily successful dancer and you're highly respected as a classical dancer. Uh, tell me about the transition between your dancing career and the film, because you had a parallel career growing together. Yeah, uh, I, I think there was not really any transition because a classical dance is, is, is in me ever since I can remember, because I have a, a wonderful history of uh, you know my aunts Lalita Padmini and Ragini being you know at one time the premier dancers of the country, um, and and also they were extremely popular you know film artists. personalities as well. Right. You know, especially Papika was one of the biggest heroines of the Indian cinema that, you know screen that you could ever think of you know in terms of her accomplishment. Papika, I don't know where to start with you. You Papika, you're, you're calling me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thank you. So you have not forgotten me. No, I will never forget you. Oh, thank you. I knew your family before you were born. <laughs> That is how I, you know, I know you as a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> the Indian film industry and your fans and your well-wishers and people around the world, they can never forget you. Your movies are some of the most memorable movies that have ever been done. First, it was dancing. When I was four, I was put in a dancing school. That too, because of your father. He used to come to Trivandrum. I belong to Travancore, Kerala. So he used to come there and he came to our family and told everybody that we should learn dancing. We means my elder sister and my younger sister, Ragini. That is how we got into the stage. We started learning dance. I must tell you, you are a great director. You know, you have been directing me and uh, taking care of so many things. I am reminded of your father because he has directed me when I was little, you know. Really? Yeah. I'm so honored. You know, coming from really? you, it's a great compliment. We call him Mama. And uh, we used to love him so much. Everybody used to love him so much. In fact, you know, my, I remember my whole family, they, they hold you in such high esteem. Yeah, even now. Even when, now. When I go to Madras, I make a point to visit the family. Art in my family was, is, was not a new, new thing. And I did my first film when I was nine. 
And I did my first performance, my public performance when I was nine as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I belong to one of those category of artists that is, you know, you either uh, somebody is known like saying, I know she is a good actress and she also does classical Bharatanatyam. Or they say that, you know, she is a Bharatanatyam dancer who's also done films. But I think I, I belong to, there is a special category of artists who have done who, both, who have done both equally. and in its own merit, you have shined in both. Yes, uh, and that's because I've I've always been. I mean, there was a stage in my career for ten years where I didn't have time, mm -hmm. but I had so much of love for the art that that kept me going. Yeah. So I didn't have time to go to my guru, yeah. but uh, also because of of really wanting to be in touch with the art form, I kind of devised any kind of. I used to accept all kinds of concerts, dirty mm -hmm. concerts. Mm -hmm. In, in you know badly organized concerts just to perform mm -hmm. you know and, and then it just wanting to perform it was also considered as you know it was looked down upon by mm -hmm. certain circles mm -hmm. but I don't think so because it gives us so much of self-confidence and exposure as well as learning so I kept all this as well you right. know and I, I took trouble I kept rehearsing whenever I was shooting I took trouble to rehearse after my shoots. Mm -hmm. I, I used to shoot in villages, but mm -hmm. I used to make sure that they give me the, the terraces of those little lodges. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to practice from 12 to 2, mm -hmm. but uh, at that time I had the energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very glad I did. And uh, when I discovered that I had come to one phase of my life and films did not excite me anymore. Mm -hmm. I, Why did films not excite you anymore? I, I because it's a know. very exciting medium and, and you're so creative. I, I don't know. I think uh, it was one of those things that could not be avoided because, you know, I, I realized I was doing the same old themes, the uh -huh. same old roles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think most actresses are okay with that because, mm -hmm. you know, they only know this profession. So they, they would probably want to, you know, they, they don't they don't have also the capacity to diversify and mm -hmm. to channelize. Mm -hmm. uh, they would probably want to do, you know, like sister roles or, but I, I never, I know I will, can never do that. Mm -hmm. And that was also because of my dance. And uh, I, I knew I could only, uh, the only, how I can be productive is if I evolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, films is a collective effort. Mm -hmm. So, and then whereas my dance was a solo effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it a challenge mm -hmm. to go back into my dance. Mm -hmm. And to, it's also a very physical thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So then keeping out of it for 10 years and then getting back to it was not easy at all. Okay. But that was a challenge to me. And that's why I decided to teach. Uh, I've been teaching for about 10 to 12 years. And uh, I'm so very glad I did because I have rediscovered the passion to act because I was also away from it. And I, I just got bored one day. I just decided that I was absolutely bored and then people were bored with me. So it worked both ways. So I decided to take a sabbatical. Well, Shobhana, it's interesting that you just talked to me about the teaching career that, that you just mentioned. I have a pleasant surprise for you. Uh, if you recall, uh, you came into our studio. It was in our smaller studio, and I interviewed you. I'm going to show you a little glimpse. It's amazing. There's a couple of things that I'm, I have in there. Okay. We At that time, we talked about your future plans, and there's two or three things that you said, and okay. you've accomplished every one of them. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm going to show you now what you told me about your future plans with respect to teaching, okay? Okay. Now, let's take a look at it. Shobhana talking to us a while ago. Your first student is going to be graduating, I believe. Yes. Must be a very exciting July. feeling for very you. Very exciting. Very exciting for me. That's good. How long was she uh, your disciple? Four years. Is that one of your future ambitions? Yes. I have, I'm going to set up a big dance academy. Wonderful. In Madras. Great. I wish you all the best. Happy <laughs> congratulations. Thank great. you. That's fascinating, Shobhna. Again, you know. Now, I have one more segment I want to show you there. I asked you about possibility, now that you've done so many great Indian film hits, that would there ever be an Indo-American co-production someday in the near future? You said certainly you'll consider that and you'll be interested in that. I want you to say what you told me at that time, and then we'll come back and talk about Mitra again, okay? okay. Let's take a look at this. You've already excelled, you know, you've already got the President's Award now. What is next in store for you? <laughs> well, I just want to be featured in good films and I want to do good roles. What about, what about Indo-American, Indo-Canadian co-productions? Would you be interested, you know, uh, if there's some good scripts involved, would you be interested in doing a film in English? Sure, why not? Good. <laughs> I have no, no language barriers, as I've, already, or as I've always uh, been saying, because a lot of people have asked me, why do you only do Malayalam? Or a lot of Tamilians have asked me, why do you only do Tamil? 
you know, it's just that I have, I can speak almost all the South Indian languages fluently. And uh, I just do any good film that comes my way, regardless of, you know, the language. That was great. Now, you said that you were going to do that, and Shobhana, you've done it now. So tell me about two things. Number one, we talked about your art institution, this, the academy that you started. And number two, about an Indo-American co-production. You've done both. I mean, isn't that really weird? What kind of a woman was she? So obviously, uh, you had the great, great courage of conviction, and you knew exactly where you were going. Tell us about your, your school now. Um... I have reached uh, uh, I have reached my 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 limit of 87 students. Wow! Yes, uh -huh. and uh, we are doing well. In fact, uh, some of my senior students are touring with me, mm -hmm. and uh, they've they've done a fantastic job, and I'm so proud of them, because we've uh, we are on this 30 city tour mm -hmm. of the U.S. and Canada, and we've already finished 10, and we've we've got rave reviews, and uh, you know it's it's more their success than mine and I can you know if my success is seeing my my work in the students you know they are able to they're able to come out here and perform and and uh, and I'm not that very old you know I'm I'm still a very very young guru per se so that is really a credit for me and uh, my school I I've begun teaching because I felt when you when you asked me which gives me more more happiness, I think you asked me if dance gives me happiness. I think it's the teaching. You're so versatile that I understand you're uh, quite versatile in music. So tell us about you know your uh, interest in music. So I'm very self-aware. Uh, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I have dabbled in a bit of percussion. I have tried learning to play the flute. Uh -huh. um, I have tr I've tried singing, but it's just. Just a, I don't know, distraction, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> have you done any recordings with? I have. I have released an album. It's uh, called Timeless. It's the sound of Bharatanatyam redefined. Wow. Uh -huh. Yes, and I hope it does well. And I have sung a song on that. Just hum the first tune for us, please. Sani sare sa sa sani sa gama pa gama pa sani pa ma gama pa ni pa ma gama re. Sani re sa. Sunny, 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 Heard wonderful things about you from, needless to say, from my family, of course. You know, they all adore you there. Yeah, I you adore know. them too. So, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, Manasika Guru, my inspiration has definitely been, been Dr. Padma Subramaniam. And, uh, uh, you know, though I, I love my own teacher, I mean, you can never, you know, compare that to anything. Uh, Paduka has been, again, a great source of inspiration and uh, also been very, very warm. It, uh, with with me and uh, I have the distinction of having performed with her and probably the only outside artist and of my generation to have performed with her in a very important character in her production and uh, it was one of it was a greatest experience because Paduka refused to rehearse and uh, that left me cold with fright and naturally you can't expect you know a senior artist like her to sit and rehearse and she was doing so many concerts that that you know she was doing nine and initially she said, don't worry, you know, you can come and rehearse with me. And I was looking forward to that. But I ended up, um, you know, really being very nervous. But uh, I had great help from your family. You know, Gayatri and uh, Gayatri's mother really helped me out. And uh, I th that was also the last concert that my father saw of mine. So that was a very important concert. Mm. But it was wonderful to work with her. Well, Paduka thinks the world of you. She's actually, you know, in fact, I spoke to her on the phone just prior to even my interview, yeah. and she asked me to convey her love to you. Yeah. She said you're one of the most outstanding artists, that, you know, and she has a lot of love and respect for you. That's my greatest compliment. Artists are also considered to be very sensitive. Yes, yeah, sensitive and absolutely special people. We are that. I know that now. Uh, I, don't, I don't fight that. Uh, I think artists uh, have an ability to be sensitive to other people's feelings. What makes you sad? Seeing another person sad, it's mm -hmm. as simple as that, you mm -hmm. know, I, I, I immediately, I, I am sad. Mm -hmm. I kind of, emotions well up and I begin to cry.
what makes you angry disrespect how dare you where did you get off thinking that you can do something like that divya you you think you're some sort of a fuck <laughs> disrespect to the art mm -hmm. is the only thing that makes me angry basically mm -hmm. everything else i can see beyond you know, mm -hmm. because i'm always thinking of the art form you know you're very eloquent in your communication and one of the few artists who are uh, not only good on screen but who can really eloquently communicate to the masses as well in your expressions for that matter it depends on the interviewer believe me oh I'm there are flattered. so many times that i just clam up and freeze and stutter and stumble Uh, well <laughs> I, i'll take that as a compliment i think it's wonderful i've this is this my second uh, interaction with you and uh, i can see your commitment to the promotion of culture and uh, i have see i i can see the way that you've done your homework you know you have you have got everything there and i have done a lot of in tv tv shows sometimes i find that they've not done their homework naturally you know it's a, it's a basically it's an interest level but you have left no stone unturned you have you know gone the entire way to make this as appealing as possible and educational for your public keeping in mind your your audience as well as the sensitivity of me or the artist i, th I thank you for that and uh, the first time that i wanted i wanted to do the show in toronto i made sure that the promoter contacted you and and i said you know we can't do this without without your support because you and what she said this is for a fact is that she i believe she just called you up and she said listen i'm new here and you don't know her and she said uh, i'm doing a show i'm bringing somebody down and i i believe she didn't even say my name and the first thing you said was no problem just come up and and tell me once you have your act together and we'll see what you you can do i think that's terrific that's very very sweet of you you know we're flattered by your presence here uh, shobhana we want to really truly from the bottom of our heart wish you all the best you are a great artist if there's one goal that you have not done so far that you would love to do amongst one thing that you have not done what would it be just grow old gracefully <laughs> <laughs> which i don't think you will ever so <laughs> so i think it's just okay. great it's Thank great you. great happiness